Hello, hello, happy Monday, and welcome to Making Waves with Moana Adams. I'm your host, Moana, a teenage girl with a lot to say and a lot more to learn. Welcome to episode 57. Today, we are talking about abundance mindset and how to attract your dream life. First, let's do current obsession. My current obsession this week is my new room. We recently moved, and my new room is probably at least double, if not triple the size of my old one. And so I actually have like a cabinet and a nice fluffy Ugg rug that I'm obsessed with. It's so soft and a projector. And I've been laying on my rug with like blankets and pillows to watch movies and F1. And I just love it so much. And I'm doing like red, white, and black. And I'm going to have a wall of my Lego Speed Champions. I'm so excited. And then my high tide this week is an Instagram account. That's been kind of going viral recently, and I found it after seeing a video they edited of Miles from Recess Therapy. He's like five or six years old, and they do interviews with kids and celebrities. And in one of the videos, he says something about you can't adjust the wind, but you can adjust your sails. And they did like a little motivational video out of it, and I just really like the way they edit their videos. So the account is at persona.motive. P-E-R-S-O-N-A dot M-O-T-I-V. But let's go ahead and get right into the episode. And we're going to start with getting clear on what we want. What does our dream life look like? We always start with an assessment on this podcast. I always say, almost no matter what we're talking about, I'm always like, first we need to start by stepping back and assessing. So what is your dream life? What does it look like? How, do you see, how does it feel? What do you do with your time? Where do you live? Are you living on your own? Do you live with somebody else? Are you in the U.S.? Are you out of the U.S.? Are you traveling a lot so you have a smaller house so that you can afford to travel more often? Or maybe you want a much nicer, bigger house because you don't want to travel that often. Are you in an apartment in New York City or are you in a cabin in the woods? You know, how many, what's the population where you live? All of these things. What five people do you spend the most time with? You know, who are your core people in your life? Are the people in your life now the same people you want to continue to have in your life? Are they serving you, making you a better version of yourself? You feel positively around them? They're strong relationships? Or, you know, maybe there's people that you have yet to meet and you want to make friends and connections with people who have similar values and beliefs as you or have similar goals things like that. Um, What is your daily routine? Do you even have a routine? Maybe you want the ability to be spontaneous and, you know, wake up whenever you want. Or maybe you are like me and you want more structure. So you know that, you know, you want to wake up at 6.30 every morning and go to the gym or drink water or make your bed. You know, what does your routine look like? And what is your job? What are your sources of income? And this is one of my favorites. What are your expenses? You know, what are you spending money on? What does your dream self in your dream life, your highest self, what does she spend money on? Are you spending money on, you know, impulse purchases of random trendy things you see on TikTok and Instagram? Or are you buying quality pieces that you know are good investments and are going to last a long time and fit you really, really well? Or are you spending money on investing in yourself and your education, buying books that are going to make you a higher version of yourself, going to classes, taking courses that are going to make you a better version of yourself, spending money on travel? And then lastly, what opportunities do you have? You know, what is available to you? So once you have a clear idea of what you want your dream life to be, what does your dream life look like, where are you trying to go, what are you trying to get to, And, you know, all the little aspects and details that you can think of for it written out. I want to shift over to finding the abundance mindset before we get into turning that dream life into a plan and goals. So let's talk about abundance versus scarcity and like what is an abundance mindset. So you, most people either have an abundance or scarcity mindset where, you know, you may see that there are you're surrounded by abundance and there's enough success for everybody and, you know, you are very grateful you practice a lot of gratitude or maybe you have a scarcity mindset where you see things, everything's too expensive and you don't have enough money, you don't have enough food, you don't have have enough 
followers, you don't have enough friends, you know, there's not enough for everybody, it's competition, you know, you have to compete for success, and other people's success means that there's less success for you. So kind of figuring out where you fall on that scale, and the first step is to just find abundance in our lives now. We are surrounded by so much abundance. Food, love, wealth, opportunities, time. No matter who you are or where you are, there is abundance in your life. You just have to look for it and find it in the right places. So what if you, we can't find it? You know, what if we are having this scarcity mindset and we're like, no, Moana. There is, there's not enough love. There's not enough food. There's not enough wealth. There's not enough opportunities. There's not enough time in my life. We have to look for it. It's not just going to magically appear. So what I recommend doing and what really helped me is every day in my journal, I would write for a month, I did this, one thing that was abundant in my life that day. Maybe I felt really supported by my friends. So, you know, I would write that I have abundance of support from my friends or maybe I, you know, made 50 bucks. And even though it's just 50 bucks, that is wealth and money flowing to me and I am working towards that and there's an abundance of that for me to continue to earn. Or maybe I went outside and spent some time outside and it was really nice outside so I could say there's an abundance of sunlight and good weather. There's so many different things. And also writing what we're grateful for. I write three things I'm grateful for every single night before bed in my journal And just practicing gratitude can really remind us of what we're surrounded by and how much we have to be grateful for. You have to believe that there is enough for everyone. You need to be excited for other people's success, knowing that yours is also going to come to you when it's time and when you're there. And, you know, celebrate other people's success instead of tear them down and compare yourself to them because, oh, they've gotten this and I don't have it. You know, just celebrate them, be excited for them, and then focus on you and working towards what you want. And let go of jealousy and fear of there not being enough time or money or opportunity for you to also achieve your goals. Same thing with failure is, you know, understanding that failure is a part of the journey. More good things will come to me and... I am supposed to be learning from this experience. You know, when I fail or something I try doesn't work, it, it's hard, of course. Everybody has bad days, but I try to see what I can learn and what I can do to shift my perspective. What can I do to shift my strategy to do better next time and know that this is just a part of the journey and success and other good things are going to come to me when it's time. Because we all have bad days, but it's what we do with them and what we do with the days after that to make them better. Because everybody, everybody has bad days, but bad days don't make a bad life. And it's okay to have bad days because that's part of the learning process. You know, it's not linear. And so understanding that there are going to be bad days. I have bad days all the time and just seeing what can I do better and what can I learn from this? I also think that it's really important to be happy with what I have, but be excited for where I'm going. And what I, what I mean by that is be able to enjoy and appreciate and romanticize the life that you're living right now. You know, for a really long time, when I was like a younger teenager, like 12, 13, 14, I hated everything, my life. And I know this is like also an age thing when you're a younger teenager, you know, you feel this way and then you grow the older you get, the more you learn. But I hated, you know, my routine. I hated so many things. I was, like, unhappy all the time. I wasn't enjoying where I was because all I wanted was to reach my goals and to be an adult and to be on my own and to, you know, go off on my own and work towards all of these things that I wanted. But I wasn't enjoying where I was now. So it's really, really important to be able to enjoy how you're living now, you know, I'm living still at home, but I'm able to enjoy spending time with my siblings and, you know, they come and hang out with me now in my new room. They lay on my carpet and hang out with me and, you know, hanging out with my parents and my friends here at home because in a year I'll be 18. 
And so being happy with the life I have now and my current state, but still working towards my goals and knowing that, you know, being grateful and enjoying the moment while still working towards my goals is going to continue to cultivate more and more abundance. Another big thing is to remember that what's meant to be flows to me. It's something that I say to myself a lot and just letting go of things that are, that you're holding on to, you know, we, I think it's hard to let go of a lot of things. You get attached to so many things and just being able to let go of things that are no longer serving me and are no longer a part of my dream life or my highest self. You know, would my highest self, would the highest version of Moana do this habit or, you know, need this item or be friends with this person? And knowing that sometimes it's okay to let go because what what's meant to be will flow to me and what's not will leave. And I just need to accept it with grace and know that there are always going to be better things coming because, you know, whatever your belief system is, it might be the universe, it might be God or whoever or whatever you trust in spiritually and celebrate, know that they are working in your favor and that everything is going to work out eventually. So I also want to talk about investing in yourself to kind of cultivate this abundance mindset because it's something that I'm learning recently. I've always been a huge saver when it comes to money since I was in elementary school. I never wanted to spend money, my own money. I always wanted to hold on to it and keep it and save it. And recently I've learned how important it is to invest in yourself and, you know, spend money on educating yourself or, you know, improving your lifestyle, improving your day-to-day, making, spending money to make your day-to-day more productive and more efficient. For example, I recently found out that I got into a, let's just say a continued education for the career I'm pursuing, and I don't plan to go to college, but this thing that I want to do and I'm going to is not cheap. But for me, I know that spending the money on this thing and going to it and learning, I'm going to learn so much that that money that I'm spending to get there, it's probably going to cost, like, I don't have the money now. I'm going to have to make it over the next couple months to get there and save up to go. I'm going to spend probably everything in my bank account to get there and to go to this education opportunity and then I know that I'm not going to college so this is how I'm going to continue to get education in the career I'm pursuing and that money will come back to me because I'm going to learn so much about you know being better at what I want to do that I'm going to make that money back and it's going to flow back to me and also treating yourself with guilt now I'm not saying go into debt and buy yourself every single thing that you see But when you find something that you really want really, really bad and you know that it's going to add into your life and make your day-to-day more positive, treat yourself and don't feel guilty about it. Because when you feel guilty, you're focusing on the scarcity of, oh, I don't have enough money or I shouldn't have spent that money on that. Just enjoy it because what's done is done and, you know, you did it for you and it is a part of investing in yourself is investing also in the little things that make you happy or the big things, you know, it just depends, but spend within your means, of course, but don't feel guilty about it. Just embrace it and enjoy it. And, you know, know that that money is going to come back to you in some way or another. So let's talk about getting to our dream life, dream life. Now that we've kind of figured out this whole abundance mindset thing, think about all of your goals that you want. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? What can I do to get there? What can you do to get the experience you need or the money or the job or the college um, acceptance? Whatever your goals are, what is it going to take for you to get there? Because you need to turn your dreams into goals, first of all. I don't have dreams. I have goals, period. Like, no, we don't just daydream we're proactive, we're, we have goals that have a set time, they have a plan, we are figuring out what is it going to take to accomplish these goals. I like to take my goals, 
write them all out. I have a sheet, a uh, Google Doc of like huge, massive lifetime goals. Like I'm talking like super ambitious, crazy goals, like be on the cover of Vogue, basically. Things like that. Or like Forbes 30 under 30. Things like that. And then I have more smaller goals that lead up to those big things. And I turn those smaller goals into to-do lists. So what steps do you need to take to achieve your goals? Write down even the simplest things. Like, it could be something so, so, so small, but it still has to get done at some point. So write it down so you can check it off. It could be, for example, let's say you wanted to start a podcast. That's a good example. Part of starting a po- Part of starting a podcast is finding a name or maybe writing down episode ideas or finding a software to store all of your episode ideas like I use Notion. So if you want to start a podcast, then you need to put on your to-do list, like find a software to store ideas or find a way to organize ideas and episode outlines, things like that. Even small things like that need to be on the list so that you can start checking things off and put in the work. And another big thing is looking for opportunities. For example, I'm a model, I'm a new model, I'm a young model, and so I really have to push to find opportunities and make opportunities for myself. So I'm looking, I'm searching for them, I'm searching for castings in my area, I am following accounts that post castings all the time, and I'm finding opportunities, and I'm going for it. You know, you are not going to be able to achieve your goals without trying new things and going out of your comfort zone. Because if you could achieve your goals without doing those things, you would already have them. You would have already done it. It would be too easy. So pushing yourself and just going for it. Another big thing is visualizing your dream life. Visualization can be a slippery slope. But if you're laying in bed at night and you're, you know, a lot of people think about plan out conversations with people that are close to them or arguments that they are, you know... Maybe you're in a fight with somebody in in your head before bed. You're playing through this argument. I feel like that's something that a lot of us do. You know, you're daydreaming. When you daydream, visualize yourself having your dream life, working at your dream job, going to your dream school. You know, what does your daily routine like? What does your house or apartment look like? Things like that. What does your bank account look like? What do you post on Instagram? All those things. Visualizing those things instead of the negative aspects that we don't need to be overthinking on. So another big thing that I I do this and I have been doing this a lot over the last few months because the reason that I wanted to do this episode is because I feel like I'm finally starting to, even though it's slow progress, I'm really making progress towards my dream life. I'm signed with a modeling agency. I have my first paid modeling job tomorrow. The podcast is doing better and better every day. My YouTube is doing better and better every day. I'm starting to post vlogs you know, all these things, I have worked really hard to get to where I am, and I know that more and more good things are coming, and I feel like it's because of this, like, abundance shift and getting out of my comfort zone and focusing on building my dream life and becoming my highest self, and one of the things that I've done to really make the small, these are small changes, but I think that they've really made a huge difference, is I started making changes to my daily life that align with my dream life. So what I mean by that is, and here's a good example, a couple of weeks ago, I signed myself up in my, like, for my email, because I'm always checking my email, I signed myself up for my favorite designer brand's email lists. So now I open my email and I have a newsletter from Hermes and Alexander McQueen and Chanel and Dior, and I have it from the F1 teams and things like that. And so when I open my inbox, I'm seeing those. And I also took myself off of any email list that didn't align with my highest self. I feel like digitally is probably the easiest way to make these little changes. I follow people and accounts that align with my dream life and, you know, who I want to be and where I want to go. I consume media, whether it's, you know, watching YouTube shows, movies, TVs, what I read is all you know, I'm working towards shifting to where what I'm consuming is, you know, what the highest version of Moana would be consuming. And I try to practice habits, small things that, you know, what would my highest self do? I put that in my phone case. I recently updated my phone case 
and I put in the back of it because I have a clear case so I can put in my stickers and things and right now I have what would my highest self do in there because that's what I always try to ask myself is what would my highest self do what would the highest version of want to do in this situation so for this week's homework I want you to add one habit that we talked about just one into your life so maybe for you you could practice gratitude and write down three things you're grateful for every night or you could write down one thing you had abundantly that day or you could work on celebrating and being excited for other people's success and shift to believing there is enough for everyone you could take your list of goals and turn them into to-do lists or you could start consuming media that aligns with your dream life you could sign yourself up for you know email lists and things that your highest self would receive any of those things just pick one and add it into your life see how it goes for a couple weeks and then slowly add more and more and just see how much you see abundance and positivity and attract abundance into your life that is today's episode before i give the outro i did want to talk about this little shift that we're going to have in the podcast, you are going to be hearing a lot more guests come on over the next few months. And that is because I am focusing on some other projects and going into my senior year. And I really want to give more teens a platform to share their stories. I met some incredible girls at Mr. to Teen USA this year, and I've also been able to connect with a ton of other teens online and just in daily life that I really want you to hear from them and hear their stories and their thoughts on mental health, self-love, personal growth, relationships, all the things. So you're going to be hearing a lot more guest episodes, but I'm really excited for you to hear from them. They're all so amazing and I cannot wait for you to hear their stories. But thank you so much for listening. If you love this podcast and you want to show your support, please leave a rate and review. Reviews are so, so important for the growth of the podcast It takes five minutes. If you have an iPhone, it's totally free. Go into Apple Podcasts, go to this podcast, scroll down, and click write a review. It seriously means so much to me, and I really, really appreciate it when you leave reviews. I read all of them, and I love to hear from you. Also, be sure to follow me on social media at Adams or makingwaves.ma. Don't forget to follow this show so you never miss another episode, and don't forget to drink your water. I will talk to you later.